Alrighty, now it's time for the nitty gritty. Now it's time to roll up your sleeves, break out your old number two pencil, and get ready to do those component calculations, okay? So this section I'm gonna break, I broke it up into major and minor components. Major components are those components, like I said, like the MOSFET, uh, flyback controller, the transformer, the output diode, output capacitor. And then the minor components are all those tiny little resistors that I kind of showed you that were scattered around the flyback controller itself that helped ensure the proper operation of the controller. So I guess I'll just jump right into some calculations. Um, the first place where I want to start is our full wave rectifier circuit. So there are two major component selections you need to make for your rectifier circuit. The first one being the rectifier diodes, and the second one being the smoothing capacitor to help smooth that DC source. So I have here like a little diagram I just Googled. This shows the basic schematic for a bridge rectifier. Like I said, you can Google, there's a million sources on how to actually design this, but it's, I mean, it's what you're looking at right now. That's how you design one. And then it also shows why a smoothing capacitor on the output is necessary. So this little C right here, this capacitor, um, is responsible for taking these dotted purple humps that you'll see. This is what results from a naturally rectified signal, right? So when you rectify AC to DC, it just has these little humps like this. And it changes it to something that's a lot more smooth and consistent, right? So these valleys are a lot less severe and the hills are a lot uh, more benign here whenever you have a smoothing capacitor, right? So those are two components that we're gonna have to uh, basically pick for our application. So we'll first start with the rectifier diodes. So with the rectifier diodes, the first major component parameter, and what I'm gonna do is basically, whenever we're gonna look at a component, I'm going to talk about the important parameters you need to consider whenever you're out shopping for your actual components. When you're trying to source a component, be like, will this component work in my application? Here are the things that I think you should consider. So the first one being the voltage, um, peak reverse voltage rating of the diode. So basically I have a little drawing here to explain what that means. Is normal operation of a, of a diode is that it needs to become what is known as like forward bias to allow current to flow. So this makes sense if you set in any intro to, uh, you know, electrical circuits class is that, you know, diodes only like to allow current to flow in one direction. So the voltage drop has to be across and it needs to be oriented in the correct direction to allow voltage to flow. However, in the real world, that if a, if a voltage is trying to get current to flow in the opposite direction, in the direction that the diode doesn't like, it can only handle it up to a certain voltage before it just breaks down and just like blows up and stops working. So um, basically it's like I have drawn in this little diagram. So here is forward current. So this way is the peak reverse voltage. So verse, voltage that is uh, reversed, that's polarity is reversed. So it's trying to get current to flow backwards and it's not letting it. So we're asking how much, volt, what's the voltage level at which this breaks down and actually starts allowing current to flow. And the diode will basically break at this point. It might like catch on fire or burn up or something. So the way you figure out the, well, first we need to figure out our peak reverse voltage that will be experienced by the diode, right? In this case, whenever, whenever this uh, gets rectified, these diodes are, are experiencing a reverse voltage that is equivalent to our Vn max times the square root of two. And the reason for that is you can also Google around whenever you rectify a voltage, the AC um, is like an RMS value. Whenever you convert it to DC, you multiply by the square root of two. So for example, whenever you rectify 85 volts AC, that turns into a roughly 120 volts DC rectify because that's 85 times the square root of two. Here I give an example. The case is 265 being rectified, that turns into 375 volts. So the reason I chose 265 in this case is because that is the maximum voltage, that's the maximum input voltage as mentioned on our spec sheet. See where our spec sheet is coming to help us here? 
Um, so since we're saying, look, the maximum voltage we want we want our system to be able to handle is 265 volts input. That's the only that's what our, our first component is going to be able to handle. So 265 rectified turns into 375, like I said. So whenever you're shopping for components, look for something that has a peak reverse max that is greater than 375 volts. So write that down, remember that. The next um, important component parameter for this is going to be the average rectified current value. So whenever this diode allows current to flow, as you know, um, they can only handle so much current as well like and, and they're also dissipating heat as well so if they too much current starts flowing they just get too hot and they'll burn up as well so we have to figure out well how much power how much current should this diode be able to handle and the equation i use to find this is well, i want to know what the maximum input current that this system will be having to input and to use that i i wanted to calculate um, i use two equations roughly and that is figure out the power input because I know that power equals voltage times current and figure out, uh, we'll just figure out the necessary power input and then I just take the worst case scenario. So the power input is equal to the power output divided by the efficiency. That's what this little uh, Greek letter means is the efficiency and we're assuming it is 70% efficient. So and we know our P out is specified to be five watts. So when you divide those numbers over, you get 7.4 watts is how much input power we're getting. And worst case scenario is when we have V and min, that's when you have the maximum current rating, you will get in the worst case scenario, so we have 85 volts AC rectified to 120 volts. And in order to get 7.4 watts, you'll need 61.67 milliamps. So this is roughly the average, um, maximum average rectified current that the diode will be experiencing is about 61.67 milliamps. So whenever you're shopping for components, just be sure your diode can handle um, something that is greater than 61.67 milliamps. And you always want to shop for something greater because if it's right at that limit, then you're just asking for trouble. Because anything that's, if calculations are slightly off, if conditions are slightly off, it's going to break. All right, so the next thing, um, actually here we'll we'll stop right there that way we'll chop this up smoothly and we'll go the next section i'll talk about the smoothing capacitor on the input